So Sarah Lilly, welcome to the Grace and Grit podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I love the story about how you arrived here today in terms of like you first went through the consistency code with me, gosh, how long ago? Three years ago? Yeah. I think three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then you became a founding member of Rumble and Rise, like you were one of the initial members. Yeah. So you've been in that community for two years, which I especially love having this conversation today because we can talk a little bit about how your work so is so in alignment with the message of Rumble and Rise, um, which I'm excited. I'm excited to do. And last year, well, this year, earlier this year, I think it was in May, I invited you to come into the community and teach an EFT workshop. And EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. And I would guess that a lot of listeners have probably heard of it by now. Maybe it's a totally brand new term for some people, Um, but it's, I know it's pollinated in a lot of the wellness world at this point, but let's just like start from the beginning. What is it? Totally love it. Um, So EFT stands, as you said, Emotional Freedom Technique. Um, It's really a combination of ancient Eastern practice and modern Western psychology. It's also called tapping, right? Because you're literally using your fingers to tap on acupressure points on your face and body. And I think of these acupressure points as kind of these kind of like magical off switches to your cortisol, right? Which is your stress hormone. We talk a lot lot about that in the membership. And so as you're talking about anything that's stressful, whether it's a, a major trauma from your childhood, whether it's a phobia, whether it's something stressful that's happening at work or around your kids, anything that's causing you stress, as you're talking about that out loud and tapping on these points, you're telling your amygdala to calm down. You're telling the amygdala it's safe and you're moving yourself from this place of stress this place of trauma from the sympathetic nervous system into the parasympathetic nervous system. So you're moving yourself back to a place of alignment, to a place of, to uh, back to your center. So you can make choices and take action from that place, as opposed to an old habitual place, a stressed out place, a place of trauma. I love it. So you threw out some big words there. So let's clarify them. So the amygdala, because yes, I like, I talk about it a lot in my own work and I know I've mentioned it on the show, but I'm sure there's some people out there saying, what is the amygdala? What does it do? Totally. Well, I mean, it's just basically the, the lizard brain, like the oldest part of your brain, right. Uh, which is basically survival, right. It's that part of our brain that fires when we get in fight or flight or in a stress place. Um, and certainly, uh, it has a purpose, right? It keeps us safe, like a certain amount of fear. And that response is helpful. Like it keeps us alive in, in, in dangerous situations. The problem is, is when we, uh, that stress, when we get stuck in that place of hypervigilance. So where something happened to you, like for example, um, I had a client who was in a car accident, a horrible car accident. She's okay. But that obviously is a real trauma, right? And that was a real place of, of, you know, a really traumatic situation but the problem becomes when now she has a really hard time driving and she and she's still she's stuck in that place of trauma and she's stuck in that place of hypervigilance and it's kind of taking over her life so yeah. it becomes problematic when your amygdala is kind of constantly firing as opposed to uh moving moving out of that place yeah and really in, at the mo- in the most basic definition i always think of the amygdala as just the very reactionary part of our brain right? So something happens and our amygdala immediately responds based on patterns we've maybe been practicing for a long time. Or like you said, we have a trauma response that we have maybe been retaining for a really long time. So the tapping work helps us to get out of that reactionary response and really become more proactive in our choice around how we want to handle the stress. Absolutely. Because you've talked about it too, when we're in that place of fight, flight, or stress, right? Like our system shut down, right? Like our digestion shuts down. The brain, the, the blood from our brain literally leaves the brain to go to our extremities to run from that imaginary tiger, right? Yeah. So when we're coming back to that place of, of calm, of centeredness, um, our, our thinking is literally clearer, right? We have clear cognitive thinking, our creativity comes back online, and we're able to make choices from that centered place and as out instead of that habitual place, as you said, which has so much to do with behavior change, 
right? Because if we are, like we all know that our reactions are literally habits. It's a way we've been responding to the world for so long. We literally just do it without having to think. And if we're always in reaction mode, we can't really change our behaviors. So tapping is a really awesome gateway for helping us to get out of that reaction response. And again, more into proactive choice. I also just want to clarify for the listener, um, the nervous system, because for a lot of people, they've heard about the nervous system, right? Eighth grade biology did a great job of introducing us all to that, but the parasympathetic versus the sympathetic nervous system. Um, we, we want to have a balance of living in both spaces, right? We are designed to have these two parts to our nervous system, the sympathetic being, do you want to explain this? Yeah. Yeah. The sympathetic being, which I always feel like is badly named because it always confuses me. Sympathetic know, to me sounds always, good. Always so that's the bad one. I literally so many times reverse. So yeah, the sympathetic nervous system is that place of fight or flight, that yes. place of stress, that place of like the tiger is going to eat me. Yes. Right. And then the parasympathetic nervous system is the place of rest and digest. Is that place of calm? Is that place of alignment? Absolutely. And modern day life has us living in that sympathetic nervous system, kind of in a constant state, yeah. which of course we're, you know, we're always having this hormonal cascade of cortisol and all the negative consequences that causes, which really depletes our health in so many ways. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the, I mean, we have this amazing scientific data now about tapping to and about what it does to your cortisol levels. Um, they just did a replication study where they had a group of people and they divided them into three groups they spit into a little cup, right? So you can actually measure the cortisol in that saliva. Okay. Then a third of the group did an hour of EFT. A third of the group did traditional talk therapy. And a third of the group read magazines for an hour. Okay. Then they spit in a cup again, measured the cortisol again. The EFT group, their cortisol went down 43% in one hour. The, the uh, talk therapy group went down 19%. Mm -hmm. And then the magazine group actually went up 2%. So now we actually have this amazing scientific data to literally measure that EFT lowers your cortisol. I love it. And speaking of cortisol, we're rolling into the holiday season <laughs> at the time of recording this, this interview. And so there's a lot of opportunity for stressors, for cortisol to be raised even more than it normally is. And so I could not be more thrilled that we're having this conversation at this time, because I think tapping is such a easy and accessible tool for everybody to use yes. at any time. Absolutely, it's, it's free, it's easy. You can do it in five minutes. You could even just do two minutes if that's all you have and yeah. you will immediately feel the benefits of it, absolutely. Yeah. So cool. Okay. So I, I, I do, before we get into like kind of the nitty gritty here, um, what led you to EFT? Like how did you become an EFT, not just practitioner, but also teacher? Yeah. So, um, I first learned about about 10 years ago, probably a decade ago through Gabby Bernstein, who's a spiritual teacher, who's a proponent of tapping. I learned about it then I did it on and off. I just found it super helpful. I have a background as an actor. So I've always been someone who has really trusted my body's wisdom and was into kind of somatic practices, right? And it's a very somatic practice. Um, fast forward seven years, major life event. My husband has, my husband, 50 at the time, super healthy, has a massive stroke. Life gets crazy. Um, I become this whole breadwinner, you know, that whole year was a blur. And after that year, I decided to start horse riding again, something I've always done. And uh, I was a wreck. Like I'd always been a super confident rider. I'd always been drawn to like riding the crazy horses and riding the problematic horses. I'd ridden all across the world. And I started to write again and I had this anxiety, like, and I couldn't shake it. And I did all the work. I talked all the things and I couldn't shake it. I knew it was somehow related to my husband's stroke and that trauma, but I couldn't figure it out by myself. Mm -hmm. And I worked with a EFT practitioner and really realized how, even though cognitively I had kind of moved, moved through the trauma in my mind, like my body was still stuck in that trauma. And it was manifest. The only place it was manifesting in my life was during horse riding, which makes sense, right? Cause there's an element of danger with horse riding and it was manifesting this idea. Um, I mean, you, can, you, you wouldn't believe what, I mean, my husband's stroke happened on Christmas morning while we're opening presents in front of my son and I. So it was like this crazy thing. And it was manifesting my writing as life can just be fine. And all of a sudden something can happen. Right. And so that was the feeling I was having writing this hypervigilance of any moment, something horrible could happen while I was writing. Sure. 
And I worked with the CFT practitioner and it just, it just shifted everything. And it just completely changed my relationship. All my anxiety left. It allowed me to ride with like the joy and love I've always had for it. And it was just such a profound shift for me mm -hmm. that I then suddenly felt really called to, to become a practitioner. And you and I talked about this. I talked about it. I thought about it for a long time. And I remember I had a conversation with you and I was like, I think, you know, I really, I think I should do it, but I don't know. Like it feels like the next right step. And I don't know if it makes sense in big picture and I'm not sure how it would work. And I had all these concerns about it. And you said to me, just take that first step. Like if that feels like the next step, like don't worry about all the other steps, just take that first step. Yeah. So I did. And I got certified through um, EFT Universe and it's been awesome. It's been amazing. I'm so yeah. glad you did because yeah. it's, it's kind of like you had that pull and there's, you had to, uh, you had to trust yourself that you had, you know, that pull was there for a reason and you would figure it out as you followed it and you did. And now look where you are. Like, it's just such a cool yeah. story. It's so beautiful. And I love what you spoke to earlier. You mentioned this is a somatic practice. It is a way of connecting the brain and the body. We often hear of like mind body medicine or the mind body connection. And the truth is they're not separate, right? This is all like one of the same. It's all connected. It's all communicating with each other at all times. And it's one of the things that I appreciate about the tapping technique is that it helps to connect the two, right? Oh, because yeah. how we think has so much to do with like the emotion that we're generating in our body, but also things get stored in our body that make it really difficult to manage our thinking if we don't deal with those stressors. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. So I love that this kind of helps to tackle both the mental and physical stressors of our life. Um, I also, we, we spoke about the nervous system. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention in terms of how, like how your work is so in alignment with the types of things we talk about inside of Rumble and Rise is because we do so much work in Rumble and Rise around behavior change, a big part of behavior change is leaning into difficult emotion rather than running away from it. Yeah. Right. It's like, totally. I always say it's like the, the difficult emotion knocks on the door and behavior change is a practice of opening the door and allowing it a seat at the table. Yeah. And tapping is such a literal translation of that, right? That you're literally tapping initially on exactly what you're rumbling with. So will you speak absolutely. to that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, whether it's, you know, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't. It, just, it really does allow you to do difficult things, right? Whether it's like you're about to do a really scary presentation at work and you can just tap right before you go on stage about all the fears and the concern right? and allow, allow yourself to very gently kind of process that unwanted emotion so you can get on stage with, in, in a place of confidence, right? Uh, we talk a lot about buffering, right? And, and how you have to um, be with that urge and allow that urge to pass through you, right? And, you know, whatever it is, you've made a commitment uh, that, you know, you're not going to have the pint of ice cream while watching Netflix. And suddenly you're watching the Netflix and suddenly it feels like that ice cream, like you just have to have it. And it feels almost overwhelming. Um, probably may or may not be speaking from experience. Um, <laughs> where, no, you, it's muffins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where then it, it, you're feeling that urge and you can literally tap through that urge. And it's a really beautiful way, gentle way to allow yourself to have that urge and allow that urge to feel that urge and to let to support you feeling it and allowing it to pass through you. And I even think I was thinking about this the other day because I was listening to the, the current masterclass, right? In Rumble Arise, which is about self-coaching and self-leadership. Yeah. And to me, tapping is, is self-coaching, it is self-leadership, right? I totally agree with that. It gives you a moment to pause, to identify what you're feeling. Yes. And then it takes it a step further by allowing you to process that unwanted emotion and make a different choice from a calm and centered place. Yeah. Okay. So you just so beautifully illustrated this, that this technique in literally a matter of minutes, sometimes maybe even seconds, right? Is the practice of pausing, which is, I'm going to say the number one barrier to entry. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we're just going to call that out because a lot of people are not willing to slow down. And I'm going to have you speak to this in just a second. So we have to pause. 
And then the next thing we have to do is we have to have hyper awareness of where we currently are. There's a level of acceptance that we have to have with what currently is. And boy, do people hate that because it doesn't feel good. Right. So we just want to ignore it. We want to move past it. We want to fix it. We want to numb it. We want to do anything, but acknowledge it. Yeah. So we're asking people to pause. We're asking people to accept before they can start to process, to shift that energy. So can we speak a little bit to those first two barriers to entry? Because I know that those are, if people can get past those things and see the value in working through those things, they'll get to this bigger practice. Absolutely. So yeah, there's a famous Louise Hay quote that she talks about how when you clean your house, you have to see the dirt first before you can clean it, right? And that to me is is so a great metaphor for tapping, right? That we have to acknowledge where we're at and be honest and accept that before we can move forward. And when we tap, we do at the very beginning, we do like these three kind of what we call setup statements, which are just acknowledging where you're at. Even though I'm feeling this, I, I feel like this in my body, I, it makes sense I feel this way. Or even though I'm feeling this and I hate this, I have compassion, for everything I'm feeling, right? So it's all about just accepting where you're at so you can then move through it. And I think one of the things some people are resistant to about tapping is that there is this focus on this, and I use air quotes, negative emotion piece, right? Or that people are scared to affirm this unwanted feeling they have because they, they're scared it'll engulf them. Or they, as you said, they just don't it'll want to stay feel around it. forever. It'll they'll stay around forever. Or they'll, and it kind of like law of attraction, right? They'll talk about it and it'll, it'll just, it'll get bigger, right? Yeah. But it's actually the opposite because what you're doing while you're talking about this and you're tapping, again, you're telling the body it's safe. You're telling the amygdala to calm down that you're safe. And it allows you, again, it's such a gentle technique tapping too. It's really, when you're talking about these negative things, it's so gentle because you're literally, while you're talking about it, you're telling the body it's safe and it's, it's time to calm down. So it's very, very gentle. And as you talk about it and tap, you're allowing it to pass through you and to move through you, right? And it's just, um, it has the opposite effect of, of people's fear about kind of affirming the negative in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And then once we have affirmed what our reality is, then what? Well, then you can choose a new thought, right? Like we talk in the thought model work, right? Then it's like, okay. And sometimes even it can be, even if that, that unwanted feeling is sticking around. So even if it's like, you know, even though there's still a tiny part of me that's feeling a little scared, I choose this, right? I choose to approach this with confidence. And sometimes that can be really helpful too, because you don't have to you don't have to get rid of all this unwanted feeling, especially if it's a habit, or it's been around a while, right? We can have compassion from that part of ourselves. So it's like, even though maybe when you started tapping, it was a 10 of, of uh, you know, stress or upset. And maybe now it's just, maybe it's a one or a two. Yeah. And so it's like, even though I still feel a little bit scared, I choose to approach this event with confidence. Even though I still feel a little bit nervous, I choose to trust in my preparation and trust in myself, right? So from that calm and centered, a more neutral place, you can choose how you want to, you know, react to the thing. Not, take that. I do not use the word react. Choose how you want to relate to the thing, yeah. right? And, it, and as you said, it doesn't come out of this place of reactivity and these old habits. And you can choose a new way with which to approach this, this thing. Absolutely. Which is so aligned with your thought model work, right? Which is very yeah. similar overlap there for sure. And I, lo- I love what you just mentioned there. I just want to kind of re- restate it is that you can have, and tapping shows you this time and time again, you can have two emotions sort of coexisting at the yeah. same time. You can be scared and still feel motivated. Yeah. You can feel self-doubt and simultaneously feel excited. Yeah. And I feel like the tapping technique, I know for me, really allows me to acknowledge that both are existing and that I'm choosing to turn my head towards the one that's most useful. Absolutely, yeah. It's really about sort of, I think sometimes those old fear thoughts, they just want some acknowledgement. They just wanna be heard, right? So it's like, I hear you and I acknowledge that and thank you and I choose this, right? And it's like, I tell my son all the time, it's like, you know, confidence isn't 
I feel confident. Confidence is like by taking action, doing the thing, right? Or, or bravery isn't like, I feel brave and now it's like, I do the thing and that's bravery. Bravery is when you feel scared and you do the thing anyway. And that's when bravery comes, right? So it's that same idea that we can hold, um, yeah, we can hold more than one emotion and we're not that, we're just more complex than that, right? Just having one emotion. Definitely. Um, so will you explain a little bit about the actual tapping piece? Like what is that doing? So as we're pausing and as we are acknowledging our current reality, we're simultaneously tapping on these different acupuncture points in the body. Correct? Correct. Yeah. And so will you explain a little bit about the, the, the intention behind that? Like, what is that actually doing energetically inside of our body as we're saying these statements? In terms of what is the what is the actual tapping piece? Yes. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So the actual tapping, right? Like we don't think of our bodies this way, but we're really electrical beings, right? We think of so much of our bodies as like biological, right? Digestion and that kind of stuff. We're also like electrical beings, right? Like our brain is like pure electricity, yes. right? And these acupressure points, this kind of nine basic ones we think about and tapping like the basic points other points as well but the kind of nine basic points um they're the end of these meridians which is what you use in acupuncture right these ancient sort of meridians that are proven to be uh the most kind of electricity you know most conductive points on our body basically and you can actually you can even buy one on amazon you can actually buy these little kind of um uh, pens now on Amazon, you can literally put them on your body. And when you hit the exact acupressure point, they go ding, 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 ding. Oh, and actually literally measure like where, where the, to show you exactly where the points are, right? So if you, if you're unclear and it literally will, will ding, 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 when you hit that point of electricity, basically connectivity, basically. And so, uh, you're basically tapping into that kind of the electrical system of your body by tapping on these points that send this literally sort of electrical charge, which is kind of strange to think about, but electrical charge to your brain that's telling it to relax and then it's safe. I love it. Yeah. So it is a beautiful way of explaining it. Like I've never thought of it in that, those terms and that's just very helpful. So is there a way that we can, I know that first of all, this, there is a video of this, which I will post to my YouTube channel. So people can actually maybe see what we're going to maybe do here. I hope that we can do this, but people who are listening to the podcast, you're just going to go have to go about, about this in the best way that you can. Like, let's just describe to them where these acupressure points are. And can you walk us through a sample of this? Yeah. 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 Let's what, do it. Yeah. What do you, what did you want do? What is this something that you, well, we'll go through the points first and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. Let's go so, through the points. Okay. I have a little hard time because I have a shoulders. I can't move my side. I can't move my arm right now. <laughs> the first point is right under that little finger. Maybe you can put your hand up, Courtney. So I yes. Can and so you're going to use sort of three or four fingers, right? Just a little bit higher right under that first, under that little finger. They're perfect, right there. Okay. So that's the first point. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and I'm just the tapping, like the yeah, side so of just my... tapping, just at, at a, you know, there's no, um, just at a pressure that feels comfortable. I just trust your instincts, like what feels good. Uh, the second point is right at the top of the head. Okay. If you imagine like a line that goes up kind of around your ears, it's just right on the crown there. And again, you can use like, three or four fingers right there. You're not just beating making, your head. You're just lightly. You know, you're just lightly tapping. Again, just something, it just trust your instincts. Like, you, you know, don't do it so it hurts. Just allow yourself to feel it. Yeah. You can just keep breathing. And then the set, the next point is right on the eyebrow. On so the it's right eyebrow. on the bone, right? Like in the beginning of the eyebrow, right on the bone. Okay. There. That's the third point. <sighs> and then the next point is moving to the side of the eye. So this is, a, this is a point where I see a lot of people making a mistake. So some people want to tap like way over here and it's actually again, right on the bone. So it's right here by the bone, right by the eye. Okay, so it's not the temple. It's like no, it's literally, not. Right it's literally on, on the bone, right on the edge of the eye, exactly. Okay. So we're tapping on the edge of the eye. Yeah. And then the next one is under the eye. So it's like almost right, imagining right under the pupil. Right again, on the bone, right on that bone point there. Where again, you know, if you're if you're missing the, the point, you're not gonna hurt yourself. There's no, you know, there's no, there's yeah. no danger or anything, but it is helpful to make sure you're just on the point. It's why I typically say like two fingers is good because you're just expanding the space a little bit. So then you're guaranteed to kind of hit that point. If okay. that makes sense, right? You're just kind yeah. of increasing the area that's hitting the point. 
oh, I just keep breathing. And, you know, if you're doing this along with us, you may feel suddenly hot, a little cold. You may start yawning. It's all very normal. It just kind of means like energy's moving. Okay. Um, under the nose is the next one. Halfway between the nose and the mouth here. Kind of divot there. Like that little divot between your yeah. nose and mm -hmm. mouth. Yeah. And then we have the chin halfway between the bottom left and the chin again, kind of in that little divot area. And then we have the collarbone. So you feel that kind of the U-shaped bone there and you're gonna move kind of an inch down and then an inch over on either side. Okay. Now you and I are um, both doing our left side for all of this, but does it matter? No, so I'm, I normally actually use two hands, but because I have a broken shoulder, <laughs> I can't move this side of my body. So we're symmetrical beings. So you can use, um, you know, you can use, you can do together both sides. You can use one side, you can use the other side. You can switch. Okay. It's totally either one. It's totally fine. Um, you know, both sides, doing two sides is not better than one side, right? Just whatever you feel comfortable. Uh, the last point of the, of the kind of what we call the basic recipe is under the arm. So again, it's a little hard for me to demo because I only have one hand. But if you take your hand and you kind of put it under your arm, it's, uh, it's the bottom of where your hand hits there. For most, if you're someone who has a bra, it tends to be right on that bra line there. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, I'm doing it this way. You can also cross over your body and like tap over. I can't do that right next to my shoulder, but you can also kind of almost like hug yourself and do it that way if that feels better. Or you can do kind of like monkey style this way. Always reminds me of being a monkey. Monkey style. Yeah, yeah it does look like monkey especially, style. Especially if you do two sides. Like I normally do two sides. So if you're doing both sides, then it really looks like a monkey. Whew. So that's the, that, those are the, the, the basic tapping points. Awesome. So now if like, I'll give you an example from my life, right. Yeah. Something that I'm rumbling yeah. with, and yeah. um, maybe you can just quickly talk us through like what an actual tapping session would look like. And even if yeah. those of you who are listening to the podcast and not actually seeing this, I still think it will help you to kind of hear the, the verbiage and the phrases that Sarah uses as we go through number one, that kind of the awareness tapping, accepting what is. And then the second layer of tapping is really kind of shifting our focus to what we really, how we want it to turn out or how we, where we want to choose to put our focus. So again, we're going to do this the best we can on a podcast and uh, you can watch the YouTube video if you want to kind of refresh yourself and make sure you're, you're getting it at least, uh, you know, in the vicinity of where it needs to be. Totally. All right. So I, I will tell you, um, I think something that we can use of my, from my life that I've been rumbling with is I have this really big project that I've been, it's been on my heart for several years and I am committed to doing it in 2022. Um, I have gone to the extent of hiring a coach to help me with like the foundation of this project. I mean, I've spent a lot of money just in the groundwork of this project. And now, of course, I have all these, like all the self-doubt and all, like, who am I to do this? And why am I doing this? And like, just it's so much self-doubt about it, that it's actually preventing me from doing the work totally. of moving forward. Totally. Yeah. Even though I made the decision, you know, I've made the decision hard. I'm now caught up in this spin cycle of, oh, which is just making it so much harder. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Totally get it. Um, and I just want to say just for people watching the YouTube video, yeah. um, if you're watching this as I'm tapping with Courtney, um, if you actually just follow along because we have these mirror neurons, even if, you know, you don't relate to Courtney's specific issue that we're going to tap on. If you literally tap along as we're doing it, you will actually get some of the benefits of, of Courtney's shifts just because of these mirror neurons and that we, you know, your brain is going to kind of also receive some of these benefits. So oh, interesting. if you're just watching along, I'd encourage you to kind of tap along as we, as we tap. Okay. Awesome. So you just put your hand on your heart a little bit and kind of tune in. And so just thinking about that, that big project, what is, um, and you don't have to tell me what it is. You can just talk about like, you know, you can, you know, just say the next step. So thinking about like the next step, so getting more specific than just like this big project, mm -hmm. like, a specific step that you need to do for this big project that you're feeling a lot of resistance and self-doubt around. So just tuning into that, right? Whatever that next step is, this is something you want to take it's related to this project. And just tuning into that, like it's just how, how big is that self-doubt? Like zero to 10, zero being like you feel zero self-doubt and 10 being like it's, you know, massive. 
It just, what is that? What is that number? I would say it's like a, a four, four or five. Four or five. No, let's, I'm sorry. You said 10 was massive self-doubt. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, probably a six or a seven. Okay. So six or seven. And when you, you tune into that, like, where does that show up in your body? Do you feel it anywhere specifically? You know, it could be like in the, in your belly or your head or just physically, does that manifest in any way in your body? And you tune into that, that self-doubt. Yeah. I would say I feel it like around my heart. I feel it in the pit of my stomach. Mm. Um, it feels really heavy. You know, heavy. it just feels like, yeah. oh, like you're in molasses, like I'm in quicksand. Mm, totally. And is the heart and the stomach, is it both, they both have that kind of heavy feeling and they both, they both feel heavy. Yeah. I mean, I would say my stomach, like again, kind of, because it feels like there's a pit or almost like a hollowness, but like a heaviness mm. at the bottom of the hollowness. Mm. Totally. Okay. We're going to dive in. Now, because I can't, I have this broken shoulder. I can't yeah, I tap it. on the side of my hand. So I'm actually going to use, you're going to tap on the side of your hand. I'll talk you through it. I'm yeah. actually going to tap. Uh, I'm going to rub this sore spot, which is funny enough is the same meridian as the side of the hand. So I will be doing the same meridian, okay. just a different spot. Okay. And so you're just going to follow along uh, with my words. So even though I have this big project, even though I have this big project, and I'm committed to this project. And I'm committed to this project. I've even hired a coach to help me with this project. <laughs> I've even hired a coach to help me with this project. I feel a lot of self-doubt when thinking about taking the next step. I feel a lot of self-doubt when I think about taking the next step. And I can feel it in my stomach. And I can feel it in my stomach. It's hollow with this heaviness at the bottom. It's, it feels hollow with a heaviness in the bottom of it. But I have compassion for everything I'm feeling that I have compassion for everything that I'm feeling. Do, does that feel true to you that you have compassion? Can you have compassion? Because if you don't, it doesn't feel true. We'll, we'll change the language. I want to make yeah. sure it feels, does that feel true? Can I have compassion? It does. It does. Yeah. It, does. Yeah. it feels like I know historically when something's important to me, yeah. self-doubt is going to come along for the ride. Yeah. 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 Even though I'm committed to taking this next step towards this big project. Even though I'm committed to taking this next step towards this project. I feel all this self-doubt. I feel all this self-doubt. And I can feel it in my stomach like this heaviness. And I can feel it in my stomach with this heaviness. And just breathe into that heaviness as we're talking about it. Just make sure you're breathing into the heaviness. But it kind of makes sense I feel this way. But it kind of makes sense that I feel this way. Even though I feel this hollowness in my stomach with this heaviness at the bottom even though I feel this hollowness in my belly with a heaviness in the bottom. Makes me feel like I'm in molasses. Makes me feel like I'm in molasses. This self-doubt around this next step is like a six or a seven. Yeah, the self-doubt around this next step is like a six or a seven. But I honor everything I'm feeling. But I honor everything that I'm feeling. Moving to the top of the head. This heaviness in my stomach. This heaviness in my stomach. This self-doubt. This self-doubt. The eyebrow. I'm committed to this big project in 2022. I'm committed to this project in 2022. But I have a lot of self-doubt. <laughs> but I have a lot of self-doubt. Out of the eye. And I can feel it like this heavy molasses in my stomach. And I can feel it like this heavy molasses in my stomach. And just breathe into that sensation. Under the eye. Feels like it's hollow with this heaviness at the bottom. Feels like it's hollow, this heaviness in the bottom. Just breathe into that. All this self-doubt. All this self-doubt. The nose. All this self-doubt. All this self-doubt. And I'm committed to this project. I'm committed to this project. But part of me is just full of self-doubt. But part of me is just full of self-doubt. And I feel it like this hollowness in my stomach. And I feel it like this hollowness in my stomach. And just deep breath into that. Wherever you feel this, this remaining sensation. This remaining sensation in my stomach. This remaining sensation in my stomach. 
This feeling of being in molasses. This feeling of being in molasses. I feel like I can't take action. I feel like I can't take action. I'm in molasses. I'm in molasses. Collarbone. Deep breath. This heaviness in my stomach. This heaviness in my stomach. All this self-doubt. All this self-doubt. Under the arm. All this self-doubt. All this self-doubt. This heaviness in my stomach. This heaviness in my stomach. Deep breath. I'm just re-tuning in, right? Thinking about that specific next step that you brought up. It was a six or a seven, that self-doubt, right? Just, just tune in. Just let me know what, what is that, what that number does that feel now? Oh, I definitely think it's like a three or a four. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I definitely feel, I feel decompressed. I feel like I let it have its moment, mm, you know? Totally. Yeah, totally. And yeah, so. That's awesome. So normally I would do just for time. Normally I would do one more round because I like to get that number to like a, a one or a two. Ideally before we move to the kind of choosing a new thought. Yes. But just for time, I'm going to kind of just fast forward a little bit if that's okay. Sure, please. So I just want to, so now, so we're going to assume I just did another round. Uh, and now it's down to like a one or a two, right? We just kind of keep letting it shift. And now we'd move to another round where I just would ask you how this next step you came up with that you want to take, what, um, how do you want to relate to that? Like, how do you want to choose to relate to that next step? Um, I would say like excited and purposeful. Mm. Love that. Awesome. So let's do a round with that. Excited and purposeful. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the side of the hand. Even though I'm still feeling a little self-doubt around this next step. Even though I still have self-doubt around this next step. I choose to approach it with excitement and purpose. I choose to approach it with excitement and purpose. Even though part of me still feels like I'm in molasses. <laughs> Even though part of me still feels like I'm in molasses. I choose to feel excited and purposeful around this next step. I choose to feel excited and purposeful around this next step. Even though I might still feel a little bit like I have this heaviness in my stomach even though I still feel like I have a little bit of this heaviness in my stomach. I can still choose to feel excited and purposeful around this next step. I can still choose to feel excited and purposeful around this next step. Beautiful top of the head. Even though I still feel a little bit of heaviness in my stomach. Even though I still feel a little bit of heaviness in my stomach. I'm open to letting it go. I'm open to letting it go. It's safe to let it go. It's safe to let it go. Does that feel true? It does, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Eyebrow. And even though part of me still feels like I'm in molasses. Even though part of me still feels like I'm in molasses. I choose to feel excited and purposeful I around this next step. To feel excited and purposeful about the next step. I, I choose to feel excited and purposeful around the I next step. I choose to feel excited and purposeful about this next step. Under the eye. Even if I do feel a little bit hollow in my stomach. Even if I do feel a little bit hollow in my stomach. I can choose to feel excited and purposeful anyway. I can choose to feel excited and purposeful anyway. Under the nose. I choose to feel excited and purposeful. I choose to feel excited and purposeful. And I choose to feel excited and purposeful. I choose to feel excited and purposeful. Collarbone. Choosing excitement and purpose is always accessible to me. Choosing purpose 
and excitement is always accessible to me. Whatever else I may be feeling. Whatever else I may be feeling. I can hold more than one emotion. I can hold more than one emotion. Under the arm. And I choose to focus on feeling excited and purposeful. I choose to focus on feeling excited and purposeful. Deep breath. So how does that feel? You know, it's so interesting because I, you know, like midway through that round, like, first of all, I'm standing, right. As I'm doing this interview with you and I literally can feel my posture change. Mm. Right. So my feet feel more grounded. I feel like I, my, my spine is a little bit taller because mm. I literally feel more confident. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, yeah, I, totally. I, like your I body feels in alignment, it. literally in alignment more. Yeah. And I can hear it in my voice. Like I can yeah. hear it in the statements that like, I do believe that, you know, and that feels good. And I can Amazing. hear that projected in my voice where it's like the first round, I could also feel the self-doubt. I could feel the heaviness. It's like, I'm, mm. I was being with it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I, I literally can feel the difference emotionally, but I can feel the difference physically. Physically. Amazing. Yeah. Now, if we were working together, I would, I would say now moving forward to kind of keep this present for you. Like I, I love like a post-it note, like I choose excitement and purpose, right? I love like a post-it note on the computer with that, those words to remind yourself, um, using kind of using both parts of that as almost like a mantra. So instead of just saying, I choose excitement and purpose, it's like, even though I might still feel a little bit, you know, hollow in my stomach, I choose purpose and excitement, right? So allowing that mantra to, in, to incorporate both sides. Yeah. And, or I love the, like a reminder in your phone that pops up that has that kind of as a mantra. Um, and also if we're working together, I would say now, like, what is one step you can take? What, what is one step now you can put on your calendar today or tomorrow towards that next step, right? So to yes. kind of, to get something like tangible on your calendar to do towards this next step as you've just made this shift. So to kind yeah. of piggyback onto that, that my, mindset shift. And I love that because I think that's such an important way of like establishing the confidence, right? Is like really getting concrete about the next step because that's what helps to build the confidence is you take that small next step and then you have evidence that you can indeed move forward with confidence and purpose. So I love that. Okay. So you mentioned working with you. So let's talk about that because I'm sure listeners are like, oh, this is lovely and great. These are Courtney's issues, you know, <laughs> but I've got a lot of my own. Um, and if somebody wants to work with you on a personal level, which I think is really an amazing thing to do with any practice when you're first starting it, because it can cater to your specific life challenges, your personal rumbles and you accelerate a lot more quickly than if you're doing something that's more geared towards a group or, you know, the population at large. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yeah, so my, yeah, so my website is Emotional Freedom with Sarah. Um, if you have questions, you're interested in working together, there's a, a button on there to jump on a free call. We can just talk about what working together would look like um, and what you, what kind of things you want to work on and how I think I could help. Um, if you want to dive right in, you can book a session right there on the website too, if you just want to jump right in. Um, so you can buy a session on my website as well. Um, and also I'm going to do a, a 30% uh, discount for anyone, any listener. So the code for that is rumble and rise, all caps. Um, so that's a little bit of a, a gift as well. I love it. So we will put all that information on the, the page on Grace and Grit where this podcast is found. So we'll have Sarah's website, we'll have her email, we'll have her discount code, all the things. Um, this was awesome, Sarah. Like I knew it would be because I've worked with you for a while and I also, you know, I've had you teach in the community and, but it's so fascinating to me because every time I have a conversation with you about this work, it's, it's so reaffirming, right. About why I do it and why it's so important to the work that I do inside of rumble and rise. Um, because it's so interesting working with clients, whether they're private or in a group, one of the questions that always comes up because I'm always saying we have to allow emotion. We can't resist it. We can't numb it. We can, but that's only going to deplete your health. We have to learn how to allow emotion. And the question that always comes up is how do I allow emotion? And there's a lot of layers to that, right? Because sometimes people don't even know how to label an emotion. 
Um, but I feel like this technique is just such a brilliant way of befriending all emotion, Absolutely. not just the ones you want to cherry pick, like the joy and the peace and the happiness, but really standing face to face with the other emotions like disappointment and self-doubt and frustration that are also a part of the human experience that aren't necessarily better or worse. They just are. And they have messages for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, so yeah, I just think I, this is so brilliant. Yeah. I, I hundred percent agree. It's just such a great way to kind of gently allow yourself to feel and process those emotions. And we've talked about it in the membership, like those, and, and I, I fall into the habit too, because it's such a cultural thing, right? It's, I, I try not to use the word positive and negative emotion, right? Cause there's no such thing that just, it's like unwanted emotion or wanted emotion. Um, but as you said, it's just such a great way to support tapping such great to support you allowing emotions. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Definitely. And I also think that if you are someone who does have a lot of stored trauma or you have a hard time, um, opening up to the emotional experience, which a lot of people do, the value of working with a private coach around this type of work is immense in that you can help regulate the dosage. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So somebody yeah. who knows a little bit more about it and has traveled a little bit further down the road can help you to do it just enough that you feel benefit, but not so much that you're overwhelming your system. Absolutely. Yeah. We, you, you can, you can handle it so gently and so beautifully with such ease when you work with a practitioner that it, it it's such a healing modality in that way. Yeah, absolutely. You're amazing. So glad you're here. So glad you came. Thank you. Thank you. It was wonderful to be here. Awesome. And I will see you again soon. Thank you so much.